Greetings and welcome back to my channel, Cockroach Wisdom to Transform Your Life. Now in today's video, I want to talk to you about how to grab trauma by the balls. Yes, that's right. How to eradicate trauma from your life. How to finally stare trauma down. I mean, like at the end of this video, you are going to walk away feeling uplifted, motivated, inspired. Uh, you will have dreams and visions of how to move forward. So now before I dive in to the substance of this video, let me call on divine wisdom to move through me, to channel through me so that my thoughts and my words are in alignment to reach someone out there who needs to hear this message. A few people, even if it's just one. Additionally, I am talking to you from my own personal experience as well. Now, when I'm talking to you about trauma, let's, let's analyze it. Let's, let's walk around in that space for a little bit, shall we? And, and kind of contemplate what is this trauma? Now, the very special thing about, or one of the special things about it is that we all experience it. I mean, I guess you could say that only the privileged or only those in the know, know how to circumvent trauma, know how to thwart it, know how to avoid it. And, uh, those unsuspecting souls who get incarnated here on this planet have no idea that such pain can exist. I mean, I don't know, does, does trauma miss anybody or has every single person on the planet experienced trauma? I mean, even like the uber rich and wealthy. I think that not only that I, I won't say that I think I know from personal experience that if you can somehow master trauma, the feelings of it, the experience of it, the memories of it, comprehend it, know it, know it by its character, by its nature, by its name, by its essence, what it is, who it be, what it do, to like really know it, like you know how to tie your shoes. You know how to uh, get something when you need it, when you want it, you know, to drink water when you're thirsty, to eat when you're hungry, sleep when you're tired. Like these are the things, these are the things that you know. And in this way, you should know trauma. And everybody knows trauma differently. I mean, like your pain is not my pain and my pain is not your pain, but it hurts still the same, right? And some people have gone through worse things and other people maybe not so worse, but it still hurts though, right? So where does this trauma begin? I mean, I touched upon it in, in some of my other videos. Feel free to check them out. Just, you know, plug in your headphones and, and kick back and listen to the sounds of my voice as I expound upon various topics of wisdom for the mind, body, and soul, you know, cockroach wisdom. But we get incarnated on this planet. If you believe in reincarnation or not, doesn't even matter. You come here on this planet some people say, well, I didn't ask to be born. I didn't ask to come here. I don't know. Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. Maybe we are all on some kind of program. We're in some kind of a program. We're in some kind of a cycle. I mean, who really knows? The fact of the matter is, is that you, you land in a family that, that doesn't vibe right with you. You guys don't fit together. Uh, there's a lot of arguing going on. Maybe you've got like a, a pedophile uncle or a pedophile family member or an abusive parent or, you know, like everybody's got to deal with some kind of trauma. Like you can't, somehow or another, you can't really enjoy 
your childhood as it's sold to us on television with your favorite toys or your favorite ice cream or your favorite cereal or your favorite uh, unicorn t-shirt, all the things that kids are supposed to like, you know, holidays and summer vacations and, uh, you know, Easter vacation and, and Christmas and all these things that you're, you know, this whole big package of illusion, man. You, it's like the first day of school, you get your package of illusions and you, 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 you know, your mom, your dad, they send you out the door out into the world to go to school to learn what? Do you learn how to become a better human being? Do you learn how to be successful? I mean, do you learn about finances? Do you learn how to actually master uh, the language, the English language? I mean, like, what is it that we actually learn? What are we actually doing in, in, in life when we go out the door? I'm, I'm saying these things because I really want for you, for me, for us to take a look at how deeply embedded certain signifiers, symbols, codes, things are, are within us that makes absolutely no sense for the greater good, except if you could extract yourself from that whole narrative and become the observer and look at it, observe it, pick it apart, analyzing it like we're doing right now. So like for me, I came out of a very abusive family. I mean, like, you know, the language that was spoken to a kid, you, you could not imagine the, the beatings, you know, the, the terror, you know, the terrorizing and all these things. And I look back on it all and I think to myself, wow, how, how, how can somebody survive that? Right? What are the steps that I took in life that allowed me to move beyond that? But here's a tricky thing, or here's the funny thing about trauma though. You want a better life for yourself. You want a better life for your kids. You think you want a better life for your kids. And so, uh, you know, you say, okay, well, I'm not going to treat my kids the way my, my mom treated me, or I'm not going to abandon my, my, my children, like my dad abandoned, you know, me and all these kinds of things. And you want to do good by your child. But then maybe as a, as a funny, weird twist of fate, your, your, your child gets the, the opposite end of the spe spectrum that they're maybe too, uh, lackadaisical and too comfortable and too much loved on, uh, and too much of something. So where is the balance? Is it okay to spank a child every once in a while, if they get out of line to let them feel that dominance and that pain, uh, from, from the parent, maybe if it's done in love, if it's done in the right way, but who has the knowledge for that? Most parents are first time parents who has the knowledge for that. I would say that there are a certain select group of people who indeed have the knowledge of the exact formula that it takes to raise successful children. And it starts with partnership. It starts with who you spend time with. It starts with who you allow to uh, come into your personal space and, and intercourse with. And I don't mean intercourse on a sexual uh, level. I just mean your interactions with people. Like, I know that there are very successful people and you read it a lot in, in like Think and Grow Rich or you know Rich Dad, Poor Dad, uh, that you don't spend time with people who really don't have anything to bring to the table or that you're the sum of uh, the, the five people that you, you hang out with. So, you know, look at the company that you keep. Okay, so, I mean, I don't wanna, you know, uh, diverge and, and go off track, you know, too much, but I'm just wanting to say about how trauma just permeates every aspect of our lives. So we get born into this kind of chaos and confusion and we think it makes sense because we have all of these people around us modeling a certain kind of behavior 
that may not particularly be the correct behavior in the long run for the, for the, for the long haul or for the long game. Like, is this behavior going to serve me 10, 20 years down the road? Who's even thinking 10, 20 years down the road? We're, we're like instant gratification kind of people or not. I mean, of course it would be nice to be patient. You know, like that, have you seen that, that video about the, uh, the marshmallow test where they test kids, uh, and their patients, they say like, if, uh, they, they have these kids in the, in this room with a plate, with a plate and a marshmallow on it. And they tell that kid, Hey, I have to leave out uh, the room for a second. If you can just, uh, you know, be cool and be patient and not eat this marshmallow while I'm gone, you'll get two when I get back. Right? So they tested all these kids and some kids were patient. They waited for the bigger reward at the end. And some kids couldn't wait and just went and dived in on that first, you know, marshmallow. So, you know, these are like jewels of wisdom that you never get out the gate. You have to go through that sludge, you know, that in the trench of, of, of pain and turmoil and trauma to come out with these jewels of wisdom. Like, why didn't somebody tell me that in the beginning? Would it have been just as effective if somebody had told you in the beginning? Is life meant to be easy? Is there something about character building in terms of trauma, having experienced trauma and having risen above, uh, the trauma, you know, to gain victory over the trauma. Is there something valuable in that? I would say out of personal experience. Yes, sure. I see a lot of people seemingly happy walking around, you know, nice clothes, looking good, looking fresh, looking sporty, looking fit, right? Driving their nice fancy cars. And I think, man, you know, they must have had a good life or somebody must have set them up good or, you know, they, they had that, they got the right narrative. They got the right package for their life. And I'm look, looking at my life like, man, why is it always a struggle? Like what's going on? Like some shit just don't make sense, right? But then I think about all the wisdom that I've gained over the years of having experienced this trauma, how it has changed me, how it has made me, the things that I would not accept anymore, the things that I wouldn't do, the things that I value, how I've raised my standards over the years. And still it's a rough road to walk because you think, man, I, I got that lesson. Well, did you though? Did you really, did you really get that lesson? Did you really learn that lesson? Well, I think so. Well, of course, if you didn't learn it, then you'll have to go through it again, right? I mean, God forbid you have to go through that shit again, right? So somewhere you have to really draw the line between this is how far I'm going to go and this is how far I'm going to let people, uh, you know, cross, you know, come near to my line until I say stop, that's enough. Or these are my boundaries or these are my ethics, these are my values. Ethics and values, like who teaches that to kids? Generally speaking, of course there are parents who know, uh, who knows what the what the golden ethics book or what would you say uh, the golden narrative book. There are people who know they got the intel. They know how to do this stuff, right? Because it's 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 all it's all a program. So either you you got that success that right program or you've just been given a shitty program. I used to wonder a, a long time, like, why was I given that program? Like, why did I have to go through the things that I went through? Why couldn't I have just, why couldn't I have just, you know, grown up, uh, you know, being a sporty, you know, kid, a sporty child, you know, going to play volleyball, swim and, and just be out with people and having fun. No, I had to grow up heavy, you know, not just heavy physically, but heavy in my soul and heavy on my heart and heavy in my mind. And oddly and strangely enough, no matter all the things that I went through, I still kept pushing through, man, because I thought I used to think that that was how the game worked. I thought that life was about the struggle. Really, honestly, I thought that life was really about the struggle. I thought that, uh, if that didn't work, I'll just try the next thing. 
If that didn't work, I'll try the next thing. And if that didn't work, I'll just keep trying until I find something that works. I didn't have a plan because I didn't know I had to have a plan. I didn't even know how to make a plan. I didn't even know what I wanted even as a goal to even want to even make a plan. And then I couldn't even keep a plan because I was an inconsistent kind of a individual. See, this is what happens when you grow up without the proper foundation and with, without the proper structure. Another funky thing about trauma is that neurologically speaking, it gets trapped inside of your body. And in your body is actually where your subconscious mind is. See, because your subconscious mind is that boiler room. It's that, it's that, uh, it's that room that nobody's really allowed to, to enter because th that's where all the supercomputers are just whirring away and just doing its thing. And you can't really go in there unless, you know, it's a special technician with a special, you know, pass access, or if they know the codes, you know, and there are people out here who know the codes on how to get into your subconscious mind or to set off them triggers or to activate something because they know things about you. Right? So, your trauma gets locked and trapped in your body through your neurology. Your neurology has to do with the chemical processes that gets activated from a thought, from a sound, from a smell, from a touch, from a word, from a look, from a vibe, <laughs> you know, it gets really, really deep. It gets really deep. And, and this is the nature of trauma. I mean, it's the nature of anything that, that we're, we're feeling. This is how it's moving through the body. But of course, we want to talk about trauma. I mean, because that's the topic of this video, how to take trauma by the balls, how to grab trauma by the balls, right? Take it in your hands, grab on them joints and squeeze them tight and make it holla. We want to make trauma holla. Like, ow, ow, stop, that hurts. Don't squeeze you like that. Trauma, I'm going to squeeze you and let you holla so you can feel the pain that you've been giving me all my life. I'm done. Okay, okay, stop, stop, it hurts. Are you going to stop messing with me now? You going to stop? I'm going to stop. I promise I'm going to stop. Are you sure? Ow, it don't squeeze hard. I'm squeezing hard because I want you to know you need to stop right now because I'm not in the mover anymore. Your shit trauma, okay? I'm done with you trauma. Okay, okay, I'll stop. Let me go, let me go. All right. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> You know, this is, this is how you have to, uh, this is how we have to think now because this is the life that we live on this planet, on planet earth. It's a painful, uh, I mean, some people would say that this is hell on earth. When you think about everything that's going on, not just in your own cosmos, but in other people's cosmos, their perspectives on life and, and in other countries, which we pretty much only really get to see on television. I mean, is it really like that if you go there? Yeah, probably. You know, there's some hungry kids, some poor kids, <clears throat> some kids who are living on the barest minimum, uh, working in sweatshops, a part of, you know, uh, sex trafficking, all kinds of horrendous things going on planet Earth, people. All kinds of horrendous things going on on planet Earth. So we live in a trauma based society. We want to grab trauma by the balls. Think about that. You've been through some, some, some horrendous things in your life. You, especially now since, since last year, since this whole entire current situation has taken effect, where you probably lost friends, you know, you lost contact with family or don't want to even have contact with family. Just a whole lot of things have changed. Maybe, you know, if you weren't alone before you're alone now, if you weren't lonely before you're definitely a, a lonely now. And if you weren't in solitude before you are in solitude now and you are forced, you are now forced to sit on the pot not even get off the pot, sit on the pot and deal with your shit. 
we've all been forced to, to take a look at it, to take a look at the pain and not run away from it. And I'm here to tell you, I am, I am here cockroach wisdom to transform your life. I'm here to tell you that you are absolutely a okay. You are okay. Everything with you is fine. Fabulous, wonderful, exquisite, beautiful, glorious, top apex summit. Woohoo. Wow. You are awesome. And I mean that. I mean, like if I wasn't living in this space with a whole lot of people around me, I'd probably uh, scream and holler. So I I won't do that right about now. But I just really want to let you know that you are awesome for a whole lot of reasons. One, because you've been through what you've been through and you are here right now listening to me speak on this video. You're listening to my voice. You are awesome because you have made the choice to continue on, to march forward. You are indeed a soldier, a warrior, a survivor, a thriver. You are indeed, may I say, a cockroach because a cockroach can survive in all kinds of conditions and it doesn't really even care. It just wants to live. And, and it's not even about surviving. Cockroaches be thriving because they are interested, ultimately interested in genetic survival. They can reproduce with or without a mate, with or without fertilization. <laughs> I'm saying we have to not only change the perspective, like when, when, we ch- when we start to change the perspective the thoughts, the, the concept, the imagery, the symbolism, the power, the feeling, the sting from that concept of trauma. If we just change it around to think like, man, I'm a survivor. I got this. No, no I'm a thriver. I got this. This is nothing. When we, when we start to just change around a, a few certain key aspects, then the whole entire neurology starts to change. The chemical processes start to change. See, because of course you can go down that road and, and, and dive deep into that, that pit of, of misery and say, man, I feel so played, man, they played me. You know, they, they told me lies. They, they filled my head with all kinds of illusions. And, you know, they, they wired me wacky and, and with all these crazy beliefs. I've got to, I got to throw away a whole lot of bullshit. I got to throw away a whole lot of things that are not really going to serve me in the long run. And I'm going to tell y'all something. Right now, at this point in time, I mean, it should have been like that from day one. But I'm going to tell y'all, like, right now, it's really... It's always been about it, but I have to just say, it's, it's, you got, we got to think about the long game. It is about the long game. We've been stuck all this time on instant gratification, something to ease the pain, you know, a, a, a tub of Ben and Jerry's ice cream, uh, some quick sex, you know, some drugs, maybe, uh, some more Netflix, some more procrastination, some more getting lost in thoughts just getting lost. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't it enough? Like, are we done? Like, are we done with that? (laughs) Are we done with that people? I mean, I know I'm done. I'm like so done that I'm, I'm on the, I'm changing my neurology. I've been changing my neurology and we're going to change the neurology together. Trauma is, is that, that, that thing. It's got a hidden, it hurts. It leaves a lasting impression on you, but it also offers a kind of a wisdom and deeper inner knowing that absolutely no one can take away from you. And without the bitterness, like you've learned the lesson, you have also forgiven, 
but not forgotten because you don't want to let those same energies back into your, into your cosmos. You want to change the landscape now of your life. You don't want to let the same weeds, shall I say, back into your, into your garden, right? But we have to, we have to take from trauma that very, we gotta, we gotta dig in the, in the, in the manure of trauma and find that pearl. We gotta find that gem. We gotta find that jewel. We gotta crystallize out of it, uh, something refined, something raffiniered, something beautiful, right? Like this wasn't all for nothing, people. This whole entire challenging walk, uh, you know, this, this gladiator games, uh, if you will, it wasn't for nothing. It was to build character, to build inner strength, to build a deep inner knowing, to allow you, to give you the, to give you the, the, the foundation to be able to support and help others after you yourself have found relief and remedy and, and, and counsel. This wasn't for nothing. The time that you've spent here was not in vain. Absolutely not. And furthermore, you have a purpose here. You have a reason for being. Now, granted, let me just say that a whole lot of people have indeed benefited from the lies they told, from creating you to be a monster, shall I say, by telling you lies, by filling your head with all kinds of illusions, beating you, mistreating you, all kinds of horrendous things. And, and there are some on the, on the really horrible, extreme end of trauma who, who don't even survive. They don't even make it. I mean, that's, that's a whole nother topic of discussion. I guess I'm talking to those in the middle, maybe on the fringes of extremes on both sides and concentrated in the middle. If you can just pull yourself back from the abyss, I offer you my hand a strong, strong, mighty, mighty, strong arm and hand to pull you up out of the darkness, out of the depths of pain where you may be, no matter what it is, father, mother, sister, brother, cousin, uncle, neighbor, job, money, television, life, whatever it is, man, that shit don't matter. No, really, it doesn't matter. It only matters. The only place it matters is that it's making you to be the best version of yourself. Because how can you be awesome? How can you be wise and all-knowing if you haven't been through some things, if you haven't learned some things? And it's not to say that you know everything to, to be all-knowing, right? You know, to have wisdom. It's not to say that you know everything or that you even have to know any, everything, but it's about knowing yourself. Being one with yourself. Loving on yourself. I mean, it gets even deeper than that as well. Because how does it go on, right? How does it go on? Once we take trauma by the balls and we grab on them joints, right? And, and we want to make trauma hollow to say, stop. Okay, I'm going to be good now. I'm not going to mess with you no more because I see you got your power back. Yes, that's right. Trauma, I got my power back. How does it go on? It goes on by developing your code of ethics, your standards, your values, what you will allow, what you will not allow, what compromises you'd be willing to make, what you have to bring to the table, how to make yourself a better being, a better human being. The things that, that you need, the tools that you will need to be able to do that with the the right music, the, the right quiet time, the, the quiet time. Oh, what a, what a, 
what an extreme importance it is to have quiet time. Do not underestimate the power that people, that negative, toxic people can can have on you to cause you to develop bad habits or quirky habits or neurotic behaviors, right? So quiet time is extremely important. Meditative time, just sitting in stillness and doing nothing, emptying out your head, letting the thoughts come and just let them go. Don't try to control anything, just relax, right? Maybe listen to some music, some subliminals, some instrumentals, preferably something without words because you don't want to have something that's going to manipulate you in some kind of way unless you're comfortable with the words that you're listening to. You know the power of the words that you're listening to. See, because now if you have been a trauma victim, like especially if you have been a trauma victim, you have to be extremely careful now with the energies and vibrations you allow into your sanctum, into your sanctuary. All things are not, are not allowed anymore. That's changed now. So you have to, you have to be this supreme being that you're actually designed to be because who else goes through such terrible trauma the way you have if you weren't supreme or if you weren't divine, if there wasn't something divine about you. Because I tell you something, if this life was all there is, I mean, like really think about it. If you knew or if you thought, if you believed that this life was really all that there is, like there was nothing else going on, I don't know, no afterlife, uh, I don't know, like nothing, right? That this is it. Man, this would be a really sad space. It would it would be a, a really, it would be a travesty, a terrible blues, de depressing situation. But I know that there has to be something more. I know because I've got thoughts, I've got intuition, I've got uh, my intellect, I've got my emotions, I've got my feelings, I've got my memories. I have things. I've got I got vibes. I got senses. So I know that there's something more. And it's a call. It's a call to you. It's a call to me to explore what that more is. I know that there's more to my body even, that my body has been uh, terribly programmed to be a potential failure from all the, the trauma that I, that I went through. So this programming that goes through my chemical processes that's in my cells, that's in my, well, that's in every part of me because it's in my cells, the way I was handled and mistreated growing up as a, as, as a young female, you know? So, and it's, and it's on this molecular cellular level that we all have to get to, to nourish it to to love on it to say hey i am an awesome spiritual being i am a beautiful mind i am a loving heart a loving soul my bones resonate high vibrations my mind resonates glorious beautiful loving vibrations i see all colors of the rainbow I am that love. I am that one. I am the Neo. I am the higher mind. I am the beautiful soul. I am soul incarnate. I am divine light walking in the flesh on this planet. You know what I'm saying? Like, like what else is there? I mean, sure, if it's too much to bear and, and, and you feel like, you know, there's nothing else for me. I'm just going to, you know, smoke it out. I'm going to eat. I'm... It's still your choice. But when we want to, I think, I think like the, the linchpin here is to, to know that it is about the long game. I know I got some weaknesses too that I'm still working on, but I know that if I continue to follow instant gratification, it's going to work out detrimental for me in the long run, 
for the long game. And it's, it's about the long game, the very long game. What about life beyond, life beyond death? A life beyond the grave? You know? Something to consider. What if this life is setting up a lot of people to experience all of this trauma, all of this pain, to grow up to be negative, turn around and hurt other people, to become addictive to, uh, to harmful substances, to be overindulgent and all these kinds of things. What if you fell into that trap and got stuck in it and stayed in it and couldn't get out? And so now your whole entire body being bones, blood and marrow is vibrating and resonating with this trauma, this negative, this negative stuff because you didn't learn how to shake it. You didn't learn how to wake up and come up out of it. And so when you pass on that vibe, that energy, that mind, will, and intellect, the emotions, that whole entire thing of who you are goes out into the, into the ethers. And then what happens? I don't know. No, I don't know. Maybe those who, uh, who've had those near death experiences, you know, maybe they know. I'm just saying, I think, I feel, I know that for the long game, that if you are a trauma thriver <laughs> and you're ready to take, and you are ready to take trauma by the balls and squeeze on it hard until it hollers, ow, oh, ow, oh, stop. Okay, I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna stop messing with you. I'm gonna mess with somebody else now. If you're ready to take trauma by the balls, stand up strong, shoulders back, head straight, Look at yourself in the mirror and just say, I am divine. I am so fine. I'm fine like wine all the time. I am divine. I'm a lovely being. I'm a lovely soul. I'm a wonderful spirit deep down in my soul. I know that was the same word that rhymed, but I'm just saying, I am my higher self. I am my higher self and I love myself and in my heart that beats for me, that allows the blood to flow through my body and every cell and every molecule, electron and proton and neutron that works for me, for my higher good, let them know, send the message home that I am love and I love myself and everywhere I go, let me radiate this light of love that other people feel it. And those negative beings and those negative entities, they can't even see me because I vibrate so high with love. I am that I am. This is cockroach wisdom to transform your life, show you how to grab trauma by the balls and be the best version of yourself. Peace.